this week's episode, we talk about desserts and have an interview with Planet Yum owner and bass player for Fiddlehead, Michael Haggerty. Casting from the Vicious Pig Saloon in downtown Mattersville, this is your one-stop shop for everything punk rock, food, and, uh, well, that's pretty much it. Ladies and gentlemen, your hosts for Punk Rock Foodies Radio, Skate Rat Betty, Steve Guerrero, Brian Reinhardt, and here's the asshole in charge, Xander T. And that was New Year's by much the same. You are listening to Punk Rock Foodies Radio on punkrockradio.net. Coming at you from the Vicious Pig Saloon in downtown Mattersville. And with me, as always, is... Skate Rap Eddie. First out the gate this time. <laughs> <laughs> coming in second, Steve Guerrero. And coming in last is Brian Reinhardt. All right. We're all here. Super. We've got a great show ahead of us. I would say planned, but we don't plan any of this show. No, no. Uh, we just kind of riff. We're talking about uh, Rice Krispie Treats this week. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, desserts. That's your dessert. Go oh, yeah. It, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but uh, Punk Rock Foodies, first got to do a little business. Uh, Punk Rock Foodies is a Facebook group, and we have about 4,000 members. Show us pictures of the food you make or have ordered at a restaurant and about to eat, and we will enjoy it. Well, the pictures, we won't actually enjoy the food because we're not eating it, but... Um, we won't be mad at you. And we encourage people to post uh, how they made it, if it's super interesting. Give us the recipe on occasion. Yeah. 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 Yes. I want people to do well, that a little more often. Yeah. Well, and I, I private message a lot of times. I'm like, hey, so you going to hand me that recipe, or do I have to, like, talk <laughs> to you on Google now? <laughs> <laughs> I, I like Pinterest. to put it in the comments. I put it yeah. in the comments if needed. But, uh, yeah. I don't, like, I don't like the links. Oh, yeah. no, hell no. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. My, my recipe is always like, turn on the grill, get, get some butter, <laughs> step My recipe eat. is kind of, I made it different every time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's how I am too. It's just, uh, throw some of this in, throw some of that in, and mix it up here, and do that, and that, yeah. You say, uh, add some. That's, you know, <laughs> you say, top or what? a shit ton. A buttload. A, a buttload is a unit of measure, I found. But let's uh, let's get into some of the punk rock and uh, let's listen to some music before we get into the show because we've had all day to prepare but we want another break. So. Yeah. <laughs> how about how about Bloodstains by Agent Orange? Ooh, nice. 
Punk Rock Foodies Radio, Punk Rock Radio. Teenage Bottle Rocket, and you're listening to Punk Rock Foodie Radio. a band called Assorted Jelly Beans with a song called In Our Eyes. I love that song. It reminds me of being 15 and drinking way too much Mountain Dew and just getting really, really hyper. Woo! <laughs> so mm-hmm. this week we are talking about desserts, dessert foods, dessert beers, and I'm going to throw it to Xander because he's the leader. <laughs> so here he is. Xander T. Right as he's getting a mouthful of beer. I he's finishing the, up his drink. Exact right moment. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yeah, so we actually have, for once we actually have a tie-in. 
We have our, uh, an interview today with somebody who runs a ice cream type stand and makes their own popsicles and whatnot. So that's why I figured let's just let's keep it keep it all cohesive. So um, desserts. I'm not a big fan of desserts. I'll tell you that much. Like going out to restaurants, I never order the dessert, um, especially working in restaurants. That don't make their own dessert. It's like you know, it's just frozen shit. Like, <laughs> so mm-hmm. much is frozen. Yeah. So, and I'm still even at home. I'm not a big dessert fan. Like I can just give me like a couple of M and M's, something sweet, a little piece of chocolate, whatever. Um, I'll eat dessert as but, the meal. You know what I mean? Yeah. You give me a French silk pie, I'll eat half of that, and that's dinner. <laughs> I am a huge fan of cookies for breakfast. Yeah. And, and I know that makes yeah. me sound super adult. But I don't have little kids in my house that I have to worry about, like, doing what I do. <laughs> no, so, yeah, do it because what's, what's the difference, what's the huge Very difference big. between that and donuts? You know what I mean? Everyone eats yeah, donuts, yeah. so eat or, some cookies. Or cooking crisp cereal? Get fucked. I'm having yeah. cookies. Yeah, do it. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no rules. I, I really enjoy cookies for breakfast. I, I like cookies, and my favorite time of day to have them is for, for breakfast. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, I love cookies that uh, incorporate peanut butter cups in it. That, that's probably my favorite cookie. Mm-hmm. Uh, just oh, chocolate, oh. peanut butter. Yeah. Oh. yeah. That's some good eats. Rachel's sister made these cookies out of cake mix. Like you take the cake mix, like the, the, the funfetti cake mix, and you follow the recipe, but you don't add... I think it, like you leave the oil out or something. And then you make... You put them on the pan as cookies. And bake them as cookies, and they are so fucking good. And they are like... You, make, you can make an ice cream sandwich with them that's like to die for because it tastes like vanilla cake and yeah. ice cream mm-hmm. and they're cookies. Oh. Nice. That's good. That's good. My girlfriend made, uh, they were like espresso brownies. We, we went camping. She showed up. They met us and she brought like 40 of these cookies. By Sunday when we left, I I, ate, I think everybody got one or two. I ate the rest. <laughs> like at one point I was like, oh look, you guys are all out doing stuff and I'm stuck in the camper I might as well eat this whole bag of fucking awesome <laughs> cookies and I asked her later stuck. and like she's a super great baker and I was like so how'd you make those and she was like oh no big deal I just like picked up a box of brownie mix and made cookies and I was like okay that's not English to me like step one <laughs> step two doesn't make sense yeah so I still am I've never actually successfully made those but oh my god it's like a, a coffee cookie with bra- you know, brownie flavor. Brownies. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, Jesus, yeah. I, you know, I, it's funny because my mom. I remember when I found out that my mom always used box cake mix, and I was like totally stunned because my mom makes <laughs> everything from scratch, and it was never. We were doing something. I, I, I must have been. I probably was like nineteen or twenty years old when I found out. I was like, holy shit, really? Like, Mom's I just always so assumed. Out. Yeah, I just always assumed she made it from scratch, and I find out no, it's just the box. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? I was like, totally like, it's like when you meet your hero and, and find out that they're an <laughs> asshole. It, it is the saddest thing ever. I I was like 19 or 20 when I asked my dad if I could have you know my real mom's recipe box that we still have, mm-hmm. and uh, you know he was like, no, it's mine. You can't. I'll let you look through it. And I was like, well, great. I really just wanted mom's chocolate mousse recipe. I go through there, there's a clipping from the back of a fucking Hershey's box. Oh. <laughs> and it's like how to make, how to make Hershey's Jeez. mousse. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was like it made it as well have been like the Jello box in there. I was like, oh, that's super <laughs> sad. <laughs> Brutal. Yeah. I, I used to make a cake. Um, uh, what was that? Black Russian cake. I, I don't know what the cake mix is. I think it's just regular like vanilla cake mix. But you add Kahlua and vodka Whoa. to the Whoa. to the batter, and you do it in a bunt. And then the frosting is it's like a glaze that's powdered sugar and Kahlua. Ooh, nice! And it is really fucking good. It is moist. It's got moist. a strong Kahlua flavor. <laughs> moist. Hashtag moist meals. <laughs> I didn't do it on purpose. I swear to you. <laughs> oh, gosh. I, um, I, I, I fucking, and I'm serious about this. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm going to buy an Easy Bake Oven because I think the stuff that comes out of those things are really good, and it's right up my alley when it comes to... <laughs> 
baking. I think that's probably my speed. I'm, they got and they got cool ones now. They come in black with like little skulls on them. Like yeah, I'm getting, yeah. I'm getting it's easy bake oven, girls. dude, and I'm gonna use that shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm totally gonna use I, it. Dude, the easy bake oven I had as a kid was like my favorite toy ever. Mm-hmm. ever, ever the ever girl next door used to make them, and they were awesome. And I just, I want to, you know, I want to get in on that, man. The thing with baking that is like the pain in the ass is the fact that you have to be very accurate with your exact. Measurements. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, if you fuck up a little bit, a little bit too much baking powder, it can fuck it up. Not enough, it'll fuck it up. You know, it's like, and that's I, I don't really have the patience for it. I, I'm not, you know? I'm not brave enough to fuck something up like that. And yeah. I, I will totally fuck something up like that. And uh, yeah, and it's I, like an all day thing. Yeah, I'll leave it to the pros on that one. Yeah, it's all they think. So if you fuck it up, and it's like, dude, I just lost my whole day doing that. Preci- precision is not my thing. So I'm too scared to try something overly complicated. I I feel like that's where baking gets me is because when I when I cook I like to be a little bit like la di da about shit mm-hmm. and and really when you bake you kind of can't and I yeah I I find that that's probably the one thing that turns me off from it the most I do like to occasionally make desserts but they're more like weird desserts so like I see it on a menu or in a restaurant or in a magazine or something and so I'm like oh I should make that I made um, purses. Like where I took phyllo and poached some pears, put the pears in there, and I put like I made a homemade whipped cream that I froze and put that in there and drizzled like honey over them. Mm. Um, yeah. See, and I think that's something that's not like you don't have to be accurate with. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that, that's like I, I'm just thinking about the desserts that I do enjoy making, and they are the ones that aren't very. Great. Yeah, they're not baked. They're not real pain in the ass. Like I make a uh, thing we call avalanche, and it's a cup, give or take a little bit of white chocolate chips, a cup of peanut butter, and you just put it in a pan and melt it down, and that's basically it right there. It's like a peanut butter fudge. But then I add in Rice Krispies, mini M and M's, mini marshmallows, and just mix it up and just throw it on a pan, throw it in the fridge, and let it harden, and then that's it. And yeah. I don't have measurements for how many <laughs> Rice Krispies, how many m and yeah. just I just kind of eyeball it, and there it is. And it's fucking delicious. I, I, my husband and, and I used to have, we're still friends with her, but we, uh, like, once a month would have our girlfriend come over, and we would have, like, a kind of a dessert off. And it was really like a fat kid off, I think, is really what was going on there. And, I, and, I, and there's a 500-pound woman inside of me, so make no mistake, I will... I will get in on that competition. <laughs> so one day, um, oh, my husband had a tortilla, and he filled it with a, a smear of peanut butter. He had a smear of Cool Whip. Smear. Yep, uh, a little bit of chocolate sauce, Was a little bit moist? of honey. <laughs> <laughs> But, oh, my God, you roll it up, it was like diabetes in a bun, like in a, in a, in a wrap. It Wilford amazing, Brindley came but... to your house and was like, you must stop now. <laughs> well, and quick I words. had, I, I like to home make Rice Krispie treats or whatever myself, and so I had some, and then I layered fresh strawberry slices and whipped cream and made, like, a sandwich out of the Rice Krispie treats. Mm. Fuck yeah. Oh, yeah, that yeah, sounds good. good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there, there's a place by me that uh, I got still the recipe. They they do these for dessert. It's like a free uh, dessert when you eat there. It's a little chimichanga, uh, chimichanga but it's uh, apple inside and it's got cinnamon. It's like nice and uh, crusty. Oh my god, it, they're so awesome, dude. Um, is that place? Is, is that place called McDonald's and they call it their apple pie? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's called the Chili Pepper. It's it's good, man. And one day I'm probably going to go on a roll. Just uh, I, I've never done, like, egg rolls and that kind of thing. And, you know, doing, like, those little dessert chimichangas would be fun, you know, for a little after dinner. If you fuck it up, then you, at least you didn't fuck up the whole meal. Yeah. But uh, right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go on a run like that and just kind of mess with those kind of things. I've never really tried those kind of things. You know, like empanadas, little rolled up egg try- rolls, anything like that. You could try that phyllo dough, too. That stuff is so easy. Really? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I used I used that I used it one time uh, to make. Uh, we used to do this cook offs with my family's like or at Christmas time when we were all together or like Labor Day weekend. We always did our fantasy football draft and we do like a cook off and nerds. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I haven't done fantasy football and I don't even know how many years. <laughs> um, but uh, I did one. I did a dessert where I took the phyllo dough and I laid a martini glass on it and cut it into circles. And I was I buttered it. 
and put it in a um, cupcake pan to bake it. So I had these like cups. Yeah. And then, but there, then I took the cupcake pans and froze them, and then drizzled melted chocolate chips over the back end. So there was like another cup of chocolate, hardened chocolate. Okay. Put yeah. Filo dough in the chocolate, and then filled the filo dough with chocolate mousse. Nice. It was yeah. so good. I don't well, remember what the what the uh, I think filo dough was like the secret ingredient, and so that's what I did. I went with a dessert. And, yeah. But again, the only thing that I had to really follow directions on was how to make chocolate mousse. I other shit was I would never good. like want to try to make like a flaky pastry from scratch, but I will fucking buy one and unroll it <laughs> <laughs> and open that box like nobody's business. Yeah, but. But, like, uh, ice cream, I saw that um, Stephen Shepard had posted a few weeks ago that he took sliced bananas out of his freezer, mashed them up in a bowl, and was like, boom, I made banana ice cream. Yeah. Why am I not doing this? Yeah. (laughs) Now, I I do believe there may have been one other ingredient. But, yeah, I mean, general idea, yeah. I've got sliced bananas in my freezer. Some pussy rolls, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Man. What what dessert... Like, you know, like when you were a kid, you know, you always get that question, like, what do you want? Like, what kind of cake do you want for your birthday and shit? Like, but then as you get older, it's not like, I mean, maybe it is, but like, I stopped with the chocolate cake and I decided, okay, I like this dessert. Like, I, I want cheesecake with strawberries and strawberries. So I was like, what's like one, like your thing? Brian, what's your thing? Well, there's a couple things. There's, I'm not much of a cake guy anymore. I don't know. Maybe I've outgrown it. If I've outgrown it, it's maybe the only thing in my life I've outgrown. But there is, there is a place that started in Chicagoland. It's a chain. It's kind of expanding around. It's called Portillo's, and it's just like Chicago style food, or you know, Italian beefs and things like that. They have a chocolate cake shake where it's just a big chocolate shake, and inside they have a full slice of double chocolate cake inside the cup. Oh. So Motherfucker. It is, I'm telling you, dude, like, I've ne- I've been ordering it for years, I've never finished one. You get about midway through and you're just like, okay, this is good, I want to keep going, but I also want to live. It's uh, it, it's it's uh, really, really good and crazy decadent. Oh I mean, Jesus. that's, that's dude, they, diabetes. They just opened a Portillo's uh, not too far down the right way from me, I gotta try that. Okay, is that the same, oh, Portillo, Port- yeah. Portillo's. Portillo's. Yeah. Well, okay, yeah, if that's the sorry. Chicago joint, sorry, I'll, it, that's I'll the place. Sorry, I'm Mexican, bro. I, I, I yeah. two L's. <laughs> Portillo's. you got to roll your R's, Por- man. Come on. Portillo's. <laughs> oh, that place is good, man. I've been going there since I was a kid. They're expanding around. But anyway, yeah, chocolate cake shake, baby. Chocolate cake shake. But be, get ready. Buckle up. <laughs> oh, my gosh. When I was a little kid, my parents used to always go to Knott's Berry Farm to get the uh, boysenberry turnovers. And, you know, that you can't get boysenberry anything other than like Knott's Berry Farm, so it's kind of cool. Every time I go now, I, I make sure to take take a little time to get some uh, a butter uh, boysenberry uh, soft drink. It's like a oh man, it's so good. It's, it's, it's a carbonated drink. It's really good. And then they have a boysenberry funnel cake there with just a ton of fresh boysenberries and powdered sugar all over. And it's oh. just it's like get away from me for like five minutes, or else yeah. I might eat, eat, eat your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that reminds me, I remember being really, really young, and my parents, we had some kind of boysenberry, some kind of boysenberry dessert of some kind, and I was really young, and I thought they were saying poisonberry, and I, and I remember myself and my little brother, who's a year and a half younger than me, we were like, no, we don't want to eat the poisonberry, like, Brian, would you just eat, the, but like, no, why would you, why would you give us poison, and they could not explain it to me that no, it's not poison, it's poison, I'm like, Poison's not a word. You're trying to make me sick. <laughs> and now that I think about it, that's probably the roots of why I don't trust my parents. <laughs> we were hoping that Brett Michaels and CC Deville would come running out. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> hey Brian, look what the cat did. Again. It's poison. <laughs> <laughs> hey, by the way, are you the one that always playing poison on the jukebox here, Brian? That's me. Is that, that's gotta stop, man. Talk dirty to me. Can we play Unskinny uh, Bop on the podcast? Or, no, let's just say that for us. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> Best bass line in music. Well, hey, speaking of music, let's take a little break and come back and talk some more desserts and uh, what have you. Um, 
Steve, you want to send us off here with something? Yeah, yeah. Let's go with a little old school lag wagon. And uh, this song is called Noble End. You're listening to Punk Rock Food News Radio on punk, punkrockradio.net.
that was Neon Light by Smoker Fire, and you are listening to Punk Rock Foodies Radio on punkrockradio.net. Uh, we're talking about desserts and ice cream and sweet things, I guess. Um, so I was thinking about ice creams. Uh, I think ice cream is one of those things that has grown, like almost like, like the craft beer industry has grown. You know, there's, Yeah, there's like artisanal ice creams now. Exactly. Oh, yeah. like, um, I remember there was a place in Buffalo. It was a, I almost said brewery, a uh, ice cream factory in uh, Buffalo. When I lived in Erie, PA, they had some of the best ice cream. I don't know what it was about it. They had a cake batter ice cream that had chunks of frozen um, uh, frosting in it. God damn! And it, it was yes. just like, and the, the best one. I love s'mores. And their s'mores ice cream was to die for. Like most s'mores ice cream is like chocolate ice cream with graham crackers and marshmallows in it. This was a graham cracker ice cream with marshmallow and chocolate fudge going through it. And Whoa. it was amazing. Yeah. I can't remember the name of the company, but they're out of Buffalo. So it's more like a regional thing. I don't even think I can get it when I'm in Pittsburgh. It's like that. we got to go hmm. further north. But... Uh, I, I remember, like, what, 10, 15 years ago, I think it was uh, Cold Stone Creamery became mm-hmm. popular. Yep. And then right after that is when I started to see more of the rise in little mom and pop ice cream shops. Um, my yeah. uncle growing up owned an ice cream shop in the mall, so I I do have a fondness for ice cream shops, yeah. I spent as... Who's the dude in the shop? I'm oh, sorry. Who's the dude in the shop in the in the group who makes the ice cream? Makes the artisanal ice cream? Micah. Mi- Micah Garcia. Micah. Yeah. I can't think. Yeah. Of, oh, okay. Is he he's still yeah. in the group or did he get kicked out? I can't keep track. No, no he's, 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 he's still okay. in there. Yeah. Shout out, Micah. I think he's busy. I think he's trying to get uh, like crowdfunded to get. Okay. Open. I haven't seen him in a while, so I'm just like, oh fuck! Did he piss off Xander or Skate Rat and got a <laughs> band hammer? <laughs> no, no. I, I think he's been busy working on his uh, ice cream uh, startup and. Uh, I've actually had a couple of his flavors, and they're fucking phenomenal, dude. He 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 had that uh, the horchata one with the, the little churro bites in it, and it was incredible. Jeez. I mean, yeah, the churros really stood up to it. Like it, it, it they got they were almost like a little crunchy, so it just had this great balance of like oh these. Remember, he used nice to he used to post some pictures that looked fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah he yeah. also made. He also makes a couple uh, 420 friendly ones, so that, that one was pretty That was going to be the next question. I was wasn't interested in trying yeah. those, yeah. yeah. I heard about that, yeah. The Strawberry Fields Forever or something, I forget <laughs> what it's called. That's yeah. what he gave me. He gave me a little pint of that to take home with me, so we yeah. actually had it uh, a couple days after our, our first Punk Rock Foodie Fest when I met him. And uh, me and my wife had something that, uh, yeah, it was, it, it was potent. It was good. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. His, what's his, his business? Is Dan, Dan, Dan K. Grassfed. Yeah. Grassfed. Because yeah. it shows up in my feed as dank. Right. <laughs> that's, dank. that's the point. I think. Yeah. <laughs> I never know yeah. who's changing their name on there anymore because it took me a while to figure out that Vic Vinegar was some other some other dude now. <laughs> so I don't know. I didn't see Micah for a while, so I'm like, did he change his name? <laughs> uh, Skate Rat is uh, is Cold Stones. Do you still have Cold Stones around you? Oh, I don't know. Okay. I, I don't go seen, to. I haven't seen I don't them in a long to, time. Like, mega, yeah, I don't go to chain. I didn't, I just didn't know if they were around anymore because I remember seeing them. And oh yeah, we mentioned got it. I didn't see them yeah. forever. Uh, yeah. Oh, there's still. Uh, there's a lot. Our Baskin Robbins, I know, went out of business. The company. I just it. realized that because I came back and now it's my favorite noodle house. I go there all the time. <laughs> yeah. We have uh, one there. It's, it's a ripoff of Cold Stone. I swear to God. So it's, it's called something like Frozen Slate or something like that. Oh god. Like, it's, it literally. It's like <laughs> yeah, it's Cold Stone. Yeah. Like we get it. Like <laughs> it's Frozen but there Slate. Was, Edie's Edie's made an ice cream. They tried to like, like converge on that whole Ben and Jerry thing, and they did this dreamery thing, mm-hmm. and so it yeah. was these like real decadent flavors, and they only sold them in the pints. But I remember they had one. It was a uh, chili pepper, chili pepper and chocolate, oh. and mm. I, had, I had heard about it, and I was like, oh, I, I gotta get it, that. I gotta get it. I found one like buried in the back of a freezer at some grocery store. Like they were like trying to get rid of uh. them. And I got it, and oh my god, it was so good! Like it, really, I would eat it that was, so fast. Yeah, it was chocolate and spicy. The only my only complaint was it had a grittiness to it, like almost like you could take, like you could feel the chili powder or whatever they put in it. Mm-hmm. But uh, 
I guess they, they, they like discontinued it. They were, and that was like probably like the last one in the in Pennsylvania. Uh, ever. If if I buy a chocolate bar, that's that's usually what it is. Like a chili chocolate bar <laughs> or a spicy or an Aztec, like I hot chocolate. I make a uh, brownie. It's it easy fucking recipe, delicious dessert. It's the brownies recipe by Hershey. And then the and the um, frosting is the frosting recipe by Hershey on the back of the the like what yeah. is it, the bitter chocolate bars. My mom's secret recipe. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But I add to the batter of brownies, I add an eighth of a teaspoon of Dave's insanity sauce. Oh the Dave's <laughs> <laughs> And that's it. Damn. And it is so fucking good. All you taste is the chocolate, it's so good that all of a sudden that burn comes. And starts burning, and you just all you want to do is go back and get more. And so we were calling them crack brownies because yeah. you just eat so much. It's like I need more, I need more because it, it really good. fucking good. Yeah, uh, that's uh, adventurous. Speaking of chocolate and uh, chili, Brian, uh, am I uh, getting that one beer that you? Uh, yes, uh, I'm sending the Conquistador de la Muerte. Uh, when I went to the, uh, you know, we're on the safety of the internet, so no one knows what we're talking about in. in Illegal shit. The lady was like, uh, I sent uh, Dr. Steve some seawater samples, is what I told her. She goes, uh, Research. She goes, what's in here? And I go, um, she goes, are there liquids? And I said, yes. And she goes, what, are, what is it? Is it Pinot? Because she was like joking. I'm like, uh, oh, it's uh, it's a seawater samples. She goes, seawater samples? I go, yeah, he's a scientist. He's on the West Coast. He had sent me some samples from uh, just south of San Diego, and I had to analyze them. I'm sending him back my findings. She's like, okay. Like, we're in the middle of Indiana. She's like, okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> but even better, you're going to send somebody in California some Indiana Pinot. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. So, but I am, I am, I did send him, hopefully he gets it tomorrow, a bunch of stuff from Three Floyds, including a barrel aged, I don't even remember what it was. It's called Conquistador de la Muerte, and it's supposed to be loaded with chilies. With chilies. So, oh, it, I don't really so like spicy beer, but I hear this is really good. I haven't had it, so you can either have it when it comes in, or you can drink it ten years from now. It should be, you know, the heat will stick around. Yeah, it's not lasting ten years, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hear it's I hear it's pretty hot. So, but yeah, that, but that that, that you know, uh, beers for dessert, man. I mean, with the, with the, all the craft beers that are out there, there's so many good ones. Uh, you know, I just. Uh, Sent uh, sea samples from uh, Riverside <laughs> to Dr. Brian, uh, which was a, the chocolate porter by Hangar Twenty Four, which which is one of my favorites. And uh, I just drank it the other know, night. That was the last one I had. It was so good. Yeah, dude, isn't that like that roastiness and just, really oh, good, man. sweet, really good aroma? Yeah, I loved it, man. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever had uh, a beer float? No. Yeah. I was going to ask if anybody has done that. I thought about doing that with the. Uh, Dad's root beer thing, yeah, not your father's root beer. Oh, I thought yeah. about doing that. Oh, that, yeah, yeah. that would be amazing. But, yeah, I had it with like uh, what did I have it with? I forgot. Well, it was at Yard House, and they, they have uh, like five on the menu, which is which is pretty Great. cool. But yeah, yeah. Uh, Actually, now that you mention it, I have I I did have a couple friends who told me about doing a beer float with a local from Goose Island, a local uh, bar- barrel aged beer called Bourbon County. Um, yeah. Doing a oh, beer yeah. float with Bourbon County, yeah. and uh, they it was a couple years old, and they said it was fucking amazing. They did it with chocolate ice cream, but they did it with the, oh. the coffee. They did it with the coffee variant Bourbon County. So oh, that's just that. Yeah. That's, oh. See, to me, I, Bourbon <laughs> County to me is worth its weight in gold. So I don't know if I'd put it on ice cream. I would just like we we have a couple in our on our cabinet, and they only come out on special occasions. No, well, you got you got to do a yeah. sifter of it so you don't like waste too much. You know, just get like a, a yeah. few ounce pour and like just like a, a small scoop of ice cream, just so you can get those flavors going. Mm-hmm. And then fix the rest of the bottle without fucking no ice yeah. cream. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you need like a dessert a by a serving, not. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I guess I shouldn't just pour the whole thing on there. Yeah, not a, I'm at A and W, and I got a burger and a float. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a bunch uh, of good beers. There's um, there's a brewery in Chicago called Pipeworks. They're relatively new, and they have. Uh, a stout called uh, Abduction, and it's just a regular old stout. It's really good, but they have a whole line of variants. They have a, they have orange truffle, they have raspberry, they have cherry, they have vanilla, they have coffee, they have a hazelnut, and each one is a little is really really sweet, and those are perfect. I like them for after dinner. We'll just split them even like a little I, sipper, you know, like a something super heavy order? and sweet. Do what? 
a hazelnut porter because you just hit my mm-hmm. inner white girl. Yep, like, it's, yeah. it's hazelnut. Yeah. My basicness just came it, out. No, it, it is so good. It's so good. It's really, really good. If uh, they'll make them again, whenever they make it again, Skate Rat, I'll save you a bottle and I'll send you one. I'll send you one. Yeah, see, because I'm all about like cooking with super awesome. They they taste really stuff. good, but the aromas yeah. from them are like it's mostly the aroma. Like it, yeah. it's a really good sweet stout, but they each one smells very different. Oh. Like the the hazelnut, you really get you really get the hazelnut. See, I never yeah. thought about drinking beer for a dessert. I mean, because I grew up like, you know, you had these like dessert aperitif. Like, yeah, and mm-hmm. you know, so you're getting like anisette, uh, or, you know, something like that. And, yeah. <laughs> hey, hey. Well, if it's something heavy and sweet, and you can just have like a little bit of it. You know, like someone right. will have people that used to have like a sambuca or something after yeah. after dinner. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Something sweet and, and like that. Yeah. I have a bottle of uh, homemade uh, plum schnapps from Austria in, in, oh. my, in my possession. How, yeah. how do you come across it, something like that? Yeah. His well, wife. I, yeah, I, I was in Austria <laughs> and we were having uh, dinner with the family oh, and she was okay. poor. She was pouring them. I was like, oh my god, this is so good. She's like, here's a bottle. I was like, boom, I'm taking this with me. Nice. <laughs> I got some sea samples from Austria. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now we're talking. It's, you know, yeah, I was watching I, I was watching uh, Emerald Live years ago. When I remember I was like in college and I saw him make a Guinness ice cream. Mm. Like I just remember yeah. I just remember him like splitting the vanilla bean and scraping the shit out and like mi- putting the Guinness and everything in the ice cream maker and just letting it run. And I've always, since I saw that, I've always thought, I want to try that someday. I want to try that someday. And I, shit, it's been 20 years. <laughs> it's, not, you're, it's not too late, man. You're still young enough to do it, man. I, don't, well, and, it. don't let your dreams die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and once that happens, then I can die happy. Uh, yeah. no, but Rachel's sister makes ice cream all the time. So I got to get, when she's home from college, I got to get look into that. That sounds like a good idea. <laughs> Do you, you can do it without an ice cream maker, right? I've looked at getting a churn, but I don't. I mean, honestly, I don't have room in my house. You for can, but I have. I do have one, so. Oh great! Yeah. And I hate the space it takes up in my freezer, but I'm oh, sorry. It stays in the freezer. The uh, the the metal, the metal uh, like cylinder. The you churn. Keep it frozen, like the- and then you put that in the machine, and you put ah, all the ingredients okay. in it, and it spins, so it keeps it cold. It's like a like a slurping okay. machine is constantly spinning, and yeah, keeping okay. it from turning liquid. Dude, I, I will kick myself if I, uh, if I listen to this episode later and I don't mention there's a place in uh, Orange Circle down here that just opened up uh, a few months ago and it's it's huge. You know, so it's got a lot of good reviews. It's called A La Minute, and they make the ice cream right there on the spot with like uh, what's that? What's the dry ice? Whatever it is. Um, oh, uh, dry ice. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they call it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> they do right. I had mint chip from there, and it was so insane to see them, like, just, like, put it together right there, throw it in this thing, and, like, three minutes later, it was cold ice cream, and so fresh and so, like, mm. delicate and soft. Oh, it was, dude, it was fucking amazing. This is bullshit. I'm going to Dairy Queen after this. I know I say it every week. I haven't even had dinner yet. Jesus. Now I'm going to have dessert. I'm wondering. It, it sucks, too, because Planet Yum isn't open for a couple more days, and I was going to go up there and get a, <laughs> a pop. <laughs> um, well, uh, to bring it back to what we were talking about before, Sander, if you do an after-dinner um, uh, beer, yeah, do yeah. something that's a, not not a sour, but do something that's like a little bit tart. No, you know something sweet, oh. sweet and tar- like, like that's that's what I. Wow, Steve's giving me the thumbs down. And no, 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 man, I'm telling like, you, like a coffee. There's well, no, 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 like when, like a little bit like fruity. Um, there's a there's a beer from New Glarus called just Raspberry Tart. It's it's basically it's designed to be an after dinner beer, and it's super super sweet and thick. It's it's almost syrupy, so it's really really good. What, what were you saying earlier before the show, Steve? The uh, the one that tastes like fruity pebbles. Uh, Line and Kugel, the Sunset Wheat. The, uh, yeah, they, they, they have that beer that's pretty out there all over the country. And yeah, that tastes that. like Fruity Pebbles. It's pretty ridiculous. They also have one called Berry Weiss, Berry Weiss, which is really, really sweet. Oh, no, no, none of those beers, dude. Xander, if you want a good di- after dinner beer, get the uh, Mexican Sombrero from uh, Clown Shoes. I know you can find that up in New York. Yeah, I just saw that. I just showed you a picture of that recently, yeah. It, yeah, it's yeah, dude, that one is so fucking good. It's a Mexican uh, hot chocolate stout kind of, and it... Dude, Fly Dog makes one of those. I got yeah, that. That beer's crazy because, like, it was one of those weird beers that reminded me of my childhood, and, like, beers 
don't soon remind you of your childhood. Yeah, you well, tell us back more. Back. Yeah, but back when you're just, beer bong in it when you're eight. <laughs> Well, no, it was it was the, the 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 coffee that my grandma would make for my grandpa every morning. It was café, and it was it had that taste of like the Mexican semi-sweet chocolate, and that beer has that taste. It's just oh, okay. it's it's proper. Have you had it, Brian? I have not. I they, we get clown shoes out here, but I've only had a couple of their, you know, like the Space Cake IPA and uh, yeah, the yeah. Blake Horn Unidragon or whatever. I've had a few of those. <laughs> yeah, those are good. Well, speaking of uh, desserts and uh, Skate Rat, you mentioned it, Planet Yum. Michael Haggerty of Planet Yum, who was in the band Fiddlehead, um, he's, he's opening Planet Yum, right? This is his joint? He already opened it, yeah. Um, right. They were doing just pops, and now he has a store, and it's actually below my old loft in Vero Beach in the historic Pocahontas building. Excellent. And you are going to be interviewing him here uh, after this break. So yeah. uh, stay tuned for that. Who's got us a song? Uh, how about uh, Smoking Popes, uh, Chicago band, newer song called "Wish We Were." Love the Popes. Uh, yeah, oh. they've, they've got they've, they're new, they've still got they're still putting out songs and uh, still playing. They still rip live. So "Wish We Were" is a pretty good uh, pop punk song. So right. yeah, um, I thought you were gonna play Poison. <laughs> yeah, fuck it. Every rose has its thorn. Punk Rock Foodies Radio, punkrockradio.net. There she stands, just like someone that you see on a movie screen. Like a picture from the page of a magazine, and I have never seen a more beautiful beauty queen. And she stands, just like something that was made a long time ago. A statue by that guy Michelangelo And she don't even know How much I really love her so I wanna tell her but I'm way too scared And my feeble heart is not prepared For the damage that this love's not shared By her We're not going out I only wish we were This is Skate Rap Betty, and I'm here with Michael Haggerty, the former bass player of Fiddlehead and the current owner of Planet Yum. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit today. How are you doing, Mike? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Good, good. So let's talk about Fiddlehead first. Um, you were in a, an Atlanta-based band in the early 90s. Um, they were pretty successful. You were the bass player, right? Yes. So. Yes, I was. Um, I, I played in Fiddlehead. We, we were in high school when we started doing that, and it was a lot more successful than we had ever thought uh, which you know ultimately today I don't know that people have ever heard of us but uh, we had a lot of fun with it and I got to play with some extremely talented um, other musicians and stuff 
uh, and that was just really kind of a great experience in my life. Well, and I saw, actually, I saw quite a few people, um, you know, friends of the band, too, uh, that have started their own pages now that have gotten popularity um, to where, you know, like the Throwback Thursday stuff is so popular, it seems like, honestly, more and more I listen to older music more than I do newer stuff, but, um, you know, you mentioned you played with some good bands, you know, who was your biggest musical influences growing up, you know, before you started the high school band, who was it that you were listening to that prompted you to want to... Well, uh, I showed up in Georgia. I moved from Boca, uh, Raton, Florida, and I think I had Twisted Sister in my little uh, Walkman, <laughs> and a uh, friend it. of mine in in gym class was like, "Here, check this Dead Kennedys stuff out." Yeah, <laughs> and I was like, you know, a freshman in high school in a new town, and and I just really loved, you know, the the just unvarnished rawness of that and ultimately you know I started really discovering a lot of things through uh, 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 um, what was that documentary that they did uh, with social distortion and um, minor threat where they toured uh, another state of mind oh yeah okay uh, so I saw that and like that kind of gave me a peek into uh, the touring musician life, and I saw like Mike Ness writing love songs to his girlfriend he missed, and I, I kind of got it, you know, I understood it, and I was really drawn to that. Yeah. Um, but then through DC, I think the biggest game changer was definitely Fugazi, and by the ninth grade, or by the twelfth grade, uh, you know, I, I, I we were opening up for them, so it was just kind of like almost a dream come true as a kid to do that. To see somebody in the magazine and go, you know, this is why I'm doing this. Right. And then, you know, five years later yeah. and whatnot. Well, and I figured you guys had started in the 80s, because um, like I said, it was, you know, in the 90s. And then I saw um, 94, I think, was the last year you played together, right? Yeah, and yeah with that group, um, that was the last year. Uh, we had, I had jammed with a few other guys and put another release out or two. Um, but nothing ever really like the alchemy that happened with Fugazi. I mean, Fugazi, that would be awesome. That was great alchemy. Uh, with uh, Fiddlehead, um, you know, it was a talented group. So I got a little spoiled. And it was it's hard to find people that I feel like I'm not, like, I have a good level, like I'm super good, but at a level I'm used to playing with musician-wise, you know. You know, I, I've noticed, honestly, I, so many of the bands seem to rotate. People grow, and everybody grows at different rates. And yeah. when you have you know, four or five or six or two people together, you know, of course they're going to grow separately. It, it sounds like, um, honestly, all you guys have moved around and, and done a few different bands. I saw several credits after each of, of the band yeah. members, yourself included. And, um, you know, so it's amazing. I, uh, You had mentioned... Kyle Spence, I believe, one of your drummers, had gone on to play for Dinosaur Jr. And yep, and Jay Mascus. Um, a lot of times, Murph, their, orig their original drummer, uh, maybe doesn't like to travel internationally, I heard, and, or doesn't have oh. a visa or something. Okay. So Kyle... Or maybe, like, yeah. You can, yeah. the video in Glastonbury Festival uh, on YouTube is with Kyle playing drums. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he's a talented drummer, uh, yeah, and he also plays with um, Harvey Milk, with Stephen yeah. Tanner, um, and they're they're really good. Joey Cook was writing your lyrics um, and doing your vocals and yeah. stuff. Yeah, so you had you know in house. Joey's doing um, web web design now. Yeah, he has a pretty successful company in Atlanta, and he um, works with a lot of big clients and puts together websites now. I was going to say, actually, yeah. I think he was the creator of one of the websites that I happened yeah. upon that was like, hey, I'm going to do this for my friends, but yeah. you know, there are yeah. other people that go and look at yeah. it, too. Yeah. He had, um, basically, we had three tours we did through mm -hmm. the U.S., and he had kept a journal, and he always felt that there was funny stories and value in that, and so he wanted to put it on, on the web. Yeah. You know, to kind of just tell it once and have it told. <laughs> yeah. Which, I mean, honestly, is such a, a good idea. I feel like, honestly, that's half of what we're missing out on bands is not even, like, the music and stuff that wasn't recorded. But, you know, before we had camera phones and whatnot where everything everywhere is yeah. recorded all the time, you are missing out on some of that great stuff, some of the, some of the memories that are in between memories where the general public doesn't get to see that kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, I feel like the camaraderie sometimes is really what makes a band a band. 
to see them interact. Um, but so, you know, and I've heard you tell several stories. I think you told me a couple of stories about uh, Billy Joe Armstrong and stuff from Green Day. Um, so who was your favorite, favorite band to play with, whether or not, you know, they were well known? Like... Oh, man, there was a lot of really good bands. Yeah. Uh, was there one Nation that was better to Ulysses hang out with? was good. Yeah. Uh, Green Day was fun. We had yeah. fun with them, although I don't really like where they are today and stuff. But uh, I think, you know, he just gets on stage and cusses to a bunch of teenagers and they scream and they think it's rebellious. But it's kind of like a mockery of what it once was. We put on an early show at a... At a um, an existentialist church, which you'll hear them on. There's an interview on MTV where they mention it briefly, but they stayed at our house and you know we had fun. We went skinny dipping with some some traveling girls that were following him or something, and you know he uh, it was it was interesting. And they weren't they weren't too bad. They they had just gotten all their gear stolen. Mm -hmm in Alabama and uh, showed up with basically nothing and their band was like empty. <laughs> Which is hard. It happens I, I think more often than we think. You, yeah. you know, now it's being more publicized because things are more publicized but yeah. It's, yeah it's that's probably. a bummer you know you're trying to do your art your work it, and it takes a lot to kind of muster up the money to get your beautiful you know amplifiers and your nice mm -hmm. guitars and then some guy go you know. Um, yeah turns into a predator on that. I just saw somebody posting something the other day about another broken in band. Authority Zero got hit a couple weeks ago, I think, or a month ago, yeah. Um, yeah. A couple of them, but you know, even a band where you think, gee, they have a big name, they're, they're not making money. A lot of times they're sleeping on couches or they haven't had a yep. home-cooked meal in six months. And I, Yeah, know, that's kind of how our tours were. Um, we, um, we went to California with, I mean, uh, we did go to California, we went to Canada and played with a band called Flag Camp up there, and they were kind of uh, loosely affiliated with our, our label, and, you know, they made some, some, <laughs> some terrible, like, pasta for us to eat. It was, it was a nice gesture, but, you know, we were all kind of in the same boat with, like, whatever we could sweep up off the floor, we'll throw it in the sauce. <laughs> yeah, well, and we have, you know, we have um, Feed the Seed in Denver, one of our... Uh, members here at Punk Rock Foodies is Savvy Nichols and she, you know, she promotes where she has an extra room and a couch and when bands come through small or big, you know, they can stay with her, yeah. she'll bring them home cooked meals, you know, if they have dietary restrictions a lot of times, she can bring them vegan or gluten free or whatever, yep. desserts, you know, sweets, homemade aren't something you really get on the road, no. um, which actually leads me to Planet Yum. So, you know, now, flash forward way more years than I want to think about. <laughs> Why do I say that so much? Um, but now you've opened Planet Yum. Um, so you started with the uh, Planet Yum and the Pond Scum Pops, right? Yep. The Popsicles. And now you actually have a store. Um, so we're here in downtown Vero Beach. We're in the old Pocahontas building um, at the rear entrance. Yep. I'm not sure if I'm saying it right. I, I know where it is. But. Yeah, it's it's in a weird spot on the back corner of the building, uh, right behind the Italian restaurant there. In the uh, alleyway. Is, yeah. Yeah. It was pr it was just a production room uh, for the last four years, but so many people had found me and were knocking on my door and wanted to come in and get deals and stuff on bulk buying. So. You know, finally I open up the door to them and I have coffee. We have soft serve that's vegan here. Um, you know, everything's pretty much dairy-free, basically because of the FDA. You know, if I'm going to be releasing this product, which is my popsicles, which are the prim primary reason to why you I'm started. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, they're called ice pops. Uh, popsicles is a trademark oh, brand. I'm so sorry. Yes, <laughs> I am very careful about that. Yeah. Sorry. Um, so my ice pops are, you know, sort of the motivation here. There's, they're in uh, 13 stores. Uh, I have them in Tampa, in Hollywood, Florida, in Melbourne, Florida. I've seen them all I, uh, on the internet. I've seen them all over. I know I've run into them at least at Veggie Love and one or two other places locally yeah. here. So um, I, I've come in. I've tried your shakes and stuff. I see now yep. you're you're doing uh, food and everything right. too. So basically, the reason the reason why we don't have dairy in here is because if you do have dairy in the facility, you have to disclose it on your product. So you know, it would be really a, a damage, like a kind of a ding on my product to make all these dairy-free coconut-based pops. 
that are really yummy and then have to put the thing that have dairy in it because somebody's getting milk in their coffee or something. Yeah. So it's funny the FDA dealing with them makes you do a lot of weird stuff when you're a manufacturer. Yeah. Um, and we just do what we can to make sure we're not doing anything wrong. Well, and any time you go from the cottage industry um, to professional production, I, I guess you would say. I'm not really yeah. sure of the word for it. But yeah, once once you start entering that where Uncle Sam is involved, it, things change, really. Um, it, yeah. The rules really are, are so different. Um, I know that you started doing this, you know, not just as a trend or anything, but your son actually has some dietary restrictions, yes. so it was out of a necessity. Exactly, yeah. yeah. It was more of like a health um, coming from, you know, that's not good for you. Why don't we try and make a treat that doesn't um, negatively affect the kids so that yeah. was the motivation and and you know I, I see that effect on a lot of kids and it's it's been great you know like I've told many people I get paid in smiles so yeah. that's been really been most of the reward so far is just building the happy customer base and trying to um, grow that well and you you do well at that though I mean I you know, I'm a big fan of, of a, sense of respect and admiration of where you're from you know local community is big to me I, I like having grown up in South Florida I like being from the Tri-County area and still being in the Tri you know I move away but I always come back um, as a matter of fact I ten years ago when I had met my husband I was living upstairs in the loft apartments at the building we're sitting in now so I mean it's really cool that when I came in it, you know to see that you're here and stuff you know it, it is a neighborhood I'm very fond of so um, obviously, your milkshakes bring all the locals to the yard. I mean, I, definitely. But I, I see that people here are are very receptive to you. They're very fond of you. Um, you know, veggie love people promote you like crazy. They they love having your stuff there. Um, the new uh, cold brew concentrate that you're doing, the coffee I just bought. I haven't yeah, tried it yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My stress level was a little high. I was afraid to add caffeine to the mix. I figured Monday I'm going back to work, and Monday is... Okay. Yeah, so Monday I'm going to try it. But I did actually, I pulled up like 20 recipes. So I did pull up all these different recipes. I was trying to find one, too, um, for something other than coffee. I was thinking maybe I could do like a marinade for a steak. Yeah, that would so, probably be pretty good. Yeah, really I was thinking. Thing. Yeah, so I mean, it, I, I love the fact that not only do you have, you know, the punk rock tie-in, but I mean, obviously we have the, the foodie tie-in. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I I try to bring some of that like independent thought element and um, stuff into the into what I'm doing. And you know, with the art and everything, it's street art. I like the fact that you know they're trying to take back the streets instead of having to look at like AT and T ads. That somebody might put something cool up there that you can go, man, that's awesome, and just. Uh, Reinforce a, a brand of nothingness, really, which is great. I think that's wonderful. So the first thing that drew my eye when I came in was the artwork, the Florida style artwork, the graffiti style artwork. You know, it, it really is great. When you told me you had local artists on the wall, you know, that honestly increases my chances of coming back to any business in town. You know, yeah. tenfold right there. You know, if you are would rather display, like you said, local artists rather than AT and T advertisements. Everywhere. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's a big thing. Um, community really does go a long way. It's what you're doing here is great. Um, you know, we hope that we can get you some promotion out of this, uh, get the word spread a little bit more. And um, you know, if you guys want to come check it out, we're in Vero Beach, Florida. We're in the Pocahontas Building in the alleyway. Um, the address is 2121 14th Avenue. Uh, it's the rear suite. We're just in the back, like behind the Italian kitchen. It used to be that that was one one unit so they cut it in half and I got the the, the rear half the rear half there <laughs> well and we're doing you're doing summer hours right now so Thursday through Sunday right and yeah, then yeah just um, for September yeah. September is typically the really last difficult the... in Vero and actually they have like a restaurant support group that just formed there's a thousand some members already uh, it's called September and Vero that's a great and idea and they're just <laughs> like you know please come support local restaurants because yeah. I mean I think more die on the vine in this month than it's, it's the end month. of the dry season yeah. and the, the and honestly it seems like season takes a, a month or so longer every year to come back so but it's hotter and hotter every year yeah so come get some ice cream um yep 
And uh, and thanks, Mike. And this is Skate Rap Eddie. And this is King Friday by the the Fiddleheads. All right, I'd like to thank Skate Rap Eddie, Brian Reinhardt, Steve Guerrero. I'd like to thank Michael Haggerty for talking to us today. I'd like to thank staff here at the Big Pig Saloon in downtown Mattersville. If you're ever in downtown Mattersville, stop on by. Also, I'd like to thank the boys out on their punkrockradio.net. And when on the Facebook, check out Betty Gear. Also, check out uh, Burning Rose Studios for all your video and graphic needs. And of course, come on over to Punk Rock Foodies. Almost around 4,000 members, still growing. Come and uh, show us your food. Bone Ape Kid, everyone. Right.
I mean, they were goddamn good. They're <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, were they good? <laughs>